Yo, what is going on, homies? It's your boy Stumped back for the OPTC video, and in today's video, we're diving into Grand Voyage over at Syrup Village against Captain Kuro with a Mono Dex, Mono Shooter, and an Usopp on the team that looks a little bit like this. However, the focus of today's video is actually not on Grand Voyage, it's on this guy. S Shark, one of the newest legends to release over here on OBTC. However, this particular unit is a PvP legend, so stereotypically, he would shine in PvP. But we're going to be taking him into some regular content today. See how he rocks, see how he rolls. As a captain, he is a fighter shooter booster, 1.5 HP, 5.5 times when you're below 30%, 5 times otherwise, and has the chance of landing on your own type slot. And this is the big gimmick for Grand Voyage that works in our favor. Plus, being a nice chunky 5 times up to 5.5 if you get below the 30%, which we actually do in this particular content. However, most of the time you're probably going to use this unit not only in PvP, but for the ability to cut your HP and remove thresholds and damage reduction. But he does give base stats as well, which unfortunately doesn't really work for this content because after stage 3, you can't use base stats. It actually has an interrupt where it just removes the base stats. But as a sailor, he can't be about can't be stunned, he can't be blown away, so he's going to be really, really good in that regard. But for today, we're taking on Grand Voyage with a team that looks a little bit like this. Now, this particular team is basically the one that I put out without um, 6 plus Sabo. So if you guys do some summons on PvP Bounds in the future, or maybe you, you don't have a lot of Liberate dupes, you can come back to this video. And look, it might help you out. But the focus of today, like I said, is just to showcase the unit as a sailor, as a captain. And we're going to take him into Grand Voyage. Captain Cura of the Thousand Plants. Over at Syrup Village, level 5. That is the team. Those are the supports. Let's dive on in. Now, we are using a Sabo as a friend captain. A Sabo, starting as um, Sabo, is going to get cooldowns because Dex characters get the cooldowns. Stereotypically, the way that I run this is that we use Ace as a captain, and that actually works a little bit nicer. But for this particular showcase, we're actually using Sabo. Now, in turn 1, we get captain swapped to our bottom right-hand spot, and that's where S Shark comes in. S Shark's going to now be our captain, and for the next 3 turns, we're going to actually have him as our captain. And with this... We get the five times captain to fighters and shooters. We also get the uh, additional chance of landing on matching orbs. Plus, we have a little bit of damage reduction. Now, that matching orb part is the big gimmick to try and just get as many orbs as possible for stage two. Now, on stage two, there's resilience. We can remove that with Ryzo Shinobu. And then this is where we're actually going to use our S Shark special. Utilizing S Shark on this stage means that we actually get three turns of a base stat boost that we can carry into the next stage. But we won't have to worry about that interrupt. Now, stereotypically, with these early Grand Voyage fights, we don't want to be using specials this early. But having the ability of a three-turn base stat is actually really good for this team. It works really nicely as it gives us enough damage to take down Stage 3 pretty comfortably. So, using his special here, um, it would be better if we could use it later down the line. But look, the content starts to get a bit shaky from stage 3, so we, we still have access to it there. Now, as you guys saw, I didn't swap with Ace Sabo on turn 1. That way, we can switch into Ace on this turn. We get a full, like, basically a full body matching orbs with our switches, and then we get them locked thanks to Ryzo and... Um, not Ryzo, Shinobu. Shinobu and Momo. On stage 3, this is where uh, stuff does get a little bit shaky. Now, we take, like, a 90% HP card or something like that. And having low HP with S Shark as captain means that we are now a 5.5 times captain. So, very, very strong in this particular situation. And um, if you are at low HP with this guy, it's going to work great. But look, he doesn't have a super type, he doesn't have a super class, he doesn't have any of that fun stuff. And obviously with PvP Legends, that's what really holds them back when we are looking at them in regular content. However, the Seraphim do have a very interesting ability that if uh, Jinbei or... Um, What's his name? Senior Pink is a special. You get a little bit more out of the unit. And that will definitely see play in the future. I think it's barrier removal and damage null removal, which is really, really nice. On top of those other defensive effects that I spoke about. Now that we've passed the three turns, Air Shark's going to go back to being a sailor. He's going to get the one orb down there because we get one of every type orb on this particular team. Um, and then we can still make the matching. Except for uh, Shinobu and... Um, What's it called? Shinobu and Momo, they're going to be on an in orb, but it's not the end of the world. Now, utilizing the special of Frankie and Chopper here gives us a nice chunky heal. And then with the Big Mom support, we can get enough healing to get over the 50% HP. A downside to S Shark is he does have Barrier Pen, but the Barrier Pen is when you are above 50% HP, which is very, very annoying. 
Um, you can definitely still make use of that, but it's just very, very frustrating that a legend has a barrier pen of above 50% that is pretty much exactly the same as a rare crew. So, kind of sucks. We do want to take two turns on this stage too, if you guys are following along for trying to beat this content. We do want to take two turns here, so that way we can actually get the super swap ready of a Sabo, and uh, we can remove our captain ability of Frankie Tanky. The reason we want to do that, and also to swap with Ace and Yamato, so that way Ace and Yamato go into a dex variation. The reason we want to take two turns there, using the Usopp special to delay, means that we can move into this final stage. We can switch into the Psy variation of Frankie Tanky. We can switch into Ace, which is a quick unit, and we can get a full border orbs with the super swap mechanic. Um, they give you six turns. We, we may as well use them, and then we're just going to blitz through this final stage. Um, just be careful, like I said, on that previous stage, how much damage you do. Chat with your barrier pen units wisely, and just try and keep that middle unit alive with some some, some type changing. So on this final stage, we're going to use Ace and Yamato to be our attack booster, our chain boundary unit, and our um, cooldown reducer. Plus, they're a conditional boost as well because the enemy is not immune to burn. Ace Sabo are going to be our orb booster. They remove the despair. And then, again, switching with Frankie Tanky is going to allow us to get um, the Psy typing so we can kill that unit in the back. And as you guys see here, we just make our way down, hitting with the type advantage when we can, finishing it off with the final tap of Ace and Yamato. And wham, bam, thank you, man. There you guys go. That is Grand Voyage level 5 over at Syrup Village done with S-Shark as a sub. Like I said, not the most optimal team, I'll leave a link in the description for you guys for the team that uses a 6 plus Sabo. But um, it was actually really, really nice to see this unit actually complete some hard content. Looking at other areas of the game now, I feel like S-Shark is going to thrive in areas that involve the blow away mechanic. If you have S-Shark as a captain, he does have the ability to get around blow away, which is a very interesting mechanic that stereotypically doesn't see all that much play. But when it comes around... It's incredibly annoying to deal with. Um, with Fuji Kazara's release, everyone saw how valuable Verse Whitebeard was for stuff like PKA. And utilizing this type of stuff as captains just means you just don't have to worry about those very annoying abilities. On top of that, S-Shark does have an ability that can completely remove two turns of damage nullification and barriers if Senior Pink or Jinbei have used a special in the same turn. Now, the Straw Hat Crew V2 should count as a Jinbei character. It should count as basically any of the the Straw Hats. And this is probably the big character that is going to see the most play underneath S-Shark or alongside S-Shark if you guys are using him in regular content. You don't have to be using him as a captain. I'm taking him into worst generation now because there is a blow away mechanic. Um, and I just thought this would be the best place to use him. Plus, I wanted to highlight a big area that I feel like they missed out on. And the fact that S-Shark only boosts uh, fighters and shooters. He doesn't actually boost the dex typing. However, his special for his base stats actually does. So when you utilize the S-Shark special, as you can see, we used it on stage two. It allows us to get three turns of a base stat boost to fighters, shooters, and dex. So very strange that they excluded the dex typing from his captain ability, but included it in his special. Now, this obviously makes him very valuable as a sub. Remember, his special can get around very annoying mechanics like stun because he, he, he cuts your HP. Then if you're using him alongside another Jinbei or a senior pink, down the line we might see another senior pink, but like right now, we just don't really have one. Um, but using him to remove those really annoying abilities like barriers, damage nullification, threshold, which we actually use him for in this particular fight right here against Zoro and Killer. Um, that's pretty much where you are going to see the most play for this particular character. Just like S-Hawk and his like, very interesting mechanic of doing what Mihawk does and all that damage output and then removing something like Special Bind, you still have that sort of interesting gimmick with these characters. And whilst S-Hawk is a much better PP character than S-Shark, I think S-Shark probably has a little bit more viability in regular play than something like S-Hawk actually has. But as I was saying... The Straw Hat Crew V2, I feel like, is the biggest character that you're going to use alongside this S-Shark. If you, you guys are using him for whatever reason or whatever you need to be using him for, because you have that Jinbei in a very powerful unit. If we get more powerful Jinbeis down the line, obviously that could see some really, really nice stuff. But the big downside to running this guy as a captain is that you do miss out on the dex typing. As you guys can see there, we did bring V2 Doflamingo for this fight, because I just wanted to tear my way through um, the... Um, the worst generation Garps Challenge 11 star event, I believe it is. 
Uh, and just highlight that even though we don't have access to a captain ability on our Doflamingo, doesn't mean that we can't bring the character along on a mono dex team. Just because they're not boosted, if they work really well for the content, you can definitely still bring them to just do some really fun shenanigans. Kind of like what S-Hawk does in terms of just blowing away this particular stage if you get around the normal attacks only. Which is exactly what we did because Blackbeard is a fighter character. And um, just utilizing Dofi to sort of blast away this final stage is just absolutely hilarious. But it's going to wrap up the video. That's going to be my showcase on the S-Shark unit. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to go down there, belt the like button, hit the subscribe button, do all that good stuff for me. Most importantly, if you guys are in this beautiful world, please remember to enjoy the rest of your day. As always, homies, thank you all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Let's...